So we were, we were in that hustle phase, just grinding, trying to get it off the ground. Yes. Um, and then we had our friends helping. We were doing like events and expos. I remember buying like 5,000 wristbands from China that we were trying to use. Man, for like we did everything wrong. Gorilla marketing. Merch, merch, yeah, stuff like that. So funny, so we many lessons. We had this lessons. cartoon character made. We did a lot of like, you know, entrepreneur stuff and wasted a lot of time and money Man, really early beginning. on. And then ultimately it failed and it led Kim into kind of a, a really dark place. But at, at that point in time, I had gotten a new job making like 150k and so we were we were in a good space but the business was failing and so she wanted um something different something more to do and that's when we kind of developed the idea for curl mix so after the natural hair academy went belly up we knew that the next business that we were going to start needed to number one make money on day one because we weren't gonna we weren't gonna do any more like ad companies content all this stuff do a lot of work without getting paid for it right away and then the second thing it needed to be basically product-based, so it can be divorced from our time. So whether it was a productized service mm -hmm. or a product, um, we wanted to make sure it was divorced from our time because we, we didn't want to have another repeat of that first failed business. So we tried to learn as much as possible from that failure. At what point in terms of your app, did you know it failed? Was it just like nothing was happening or like what was the, the signal that this isn't working? We basically realized we were competing with Facebook and Instagram. And okay. so, we had we realized that women love to talk to they love to showcase their hair not talk to other women about their hair so it's like i don't want to connect with you about my problems that i'm having or this conditioner or whatever i don't necessarily even want product recommendations what i want to do is make my hair cute and take a picture and show you how cute my hair is and when I, and so we couldn't get people to come back every day and we were we had like over a thousand users or whatever on the social network but it wasn't That's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you think about it, so I think context is important here. So we're talking 2013, 2014. At that time, yeah. the App Store was yeah, a brand yeah, yeah. new thing, right? I mean, Blackberries were still, <laughs> uh, like they, they held market share still at that time. And so for you to have a thousand users on any social media app, I mean, that's, that's pretty good at that time. Oh, wow. I well, thanks. If you had told us that back then, we probably would have kept going. And we didn't make no money. And that was the other thing. I was like, we don't, this is not a revenue generating business. I can't hire people or even feed myself with this. Tim was just happened to be making a six, six figure job or working a six figure job while I was doing it. And that's the only way that it allowed me to do it. But we also realized we're going to have to make content to get them coming back every day. That meant I yeah. need to be something 365 days a year. And I was like, if I can't pay people to have them make the content, then this is not a business and this doesn't really work. And so I either need to do one, get more ad revenue so that I can pay people to make content, but even still, that's not a lot of money for a lot of work, you know, content yeah. three days a year. So I was just like, you know what? I need to come up with something else and I just closed the business. And at that time I had learned like photography, web design, like you learn so much you know, so it wasn't a complete wash. And I also made a ton of connections in the hair industry. So I was producing content for professionals in the industry. So stylists and influencers or whatever. So chemists, yeah. And so I was like, so I had a lot, a lot of education about the industry and connections at that point. And so at this point you think, all right, cool. We need to create, you're solving for a lot of the things that you are trying to, like you realize these things don't work according to this business. Let me go ahead and solve for them. And so now you're entering a product that people can use all year round. So it's not seasonal. And right. What was the first iteration of it? And how did you even come up with it? So we were watching. So funny enough, I was made, I was a DIYer back in then. Do it yourself. I was making products for myself, for my hair. And I was buying raw materials from Whole Foods and like coming home and mixing them up. From Just me. destroying my kitchen. For, <laughs> from YouTube I'm videos. The, I'm the chef. I really love your relationship. You guys, it's, <laughs> like, the dichotomy is, is like, amazing. You stuff yeah. all over the place. You make stuff, you hate it. It goes, just leave it out. It goes bad on the counter. What like, a that? Whole Foods is not cheap at the time either. It's like, what? Whole Foods right. never been At $300 and you don't even like what you made? This is... <laughs> <laughs> and so I was doing that and we saw an episode of Shark Tank where the lady was doing like organic cookies, but she was putting everything pre-packaged like ready for Crocker in a box and you could make it yourself and know where everything came from, knew it was organic and it was simple and a fail-proof recipe. recipe. Yes. So mm -hmm. I was like, I wonder if anyone's doing this for hair because I would totally buy this for like 30 bucks. And then I looked online, I couldn't find anybody doing it. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is probably dumb. If this 2015, this box doesn't exist. And there at the time there were like a thousand subscription boxes. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do it. And then Tim was like, 
no, Kim, like, you should just give it a shot. We launch it, I said one box to my cousin. And I was like, see, Touch Juice is dumb. <laughs> Nobody wants this. And then like he you was, didn't launch it right. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you just, just try again. And so it's funny, at the, same, at the same point in time that she decided to launch it, I just read, I believe it was Ryan Holiday's like Confessions of like a Media Manipulator. And I was like, you know, he has like a whole formula about how you launch, you might want to try it again. Uh, but you said Airbnb can relaunch seven times. Yeah. Shirley Cromix can relaunch twice. Yes. So yeah. I was like, fine, I'll try it. And so I ended up reading like uh, Robert Childani's book, um, Influence. Influence. So how to win friends and influence people. It's like six that principles. Was one. And then yep, I yep. applied those six principles to our website. And I also applied those six principles to pitching journalists. So I looked up, how do you pitch a journalist? Found some journal, um, found some templates and adjusted them. And then also went to buzzsumo.com to figure out who the top journalists were in my category, so for DIY, in the last six months. So found the top people, read a few of their pieces of article, used the template, pitched them with also like a custom intro about the work of theirs that I had read. And then we ended up getting Refinery29 on as our, product, our launch. So everybody who had told me no, that was a media company, I went back and traded up the chain and then said, hey, Refinery29 is covering our launch, but I hate for you to miss it. And this is like, Refinery 29 was going to work to like a million followers at the point. So like now they're like really bigger than that. Right. And then they all said yes. So we ended up getting like seven media uh, people to cover our launch and we ended up selling like a hundred boxes on that first day. And that led to a year of revenue in 2017 for 130,000 and the following year 140,000. But we realized we weren't growing. And mm -hmm. that is when we were like, okay, we're not growing like a subscription box company should grow. And we realized our box was novelty and not necessity. And then also a lot of the DIY companies that were boxes in the industry had started failing or going bankrupt. And I was like, there's not enough profit here. And I found out that the profit on our box is only 30%, but we're competing with the hair industry that can sell a bottle for $20, $30, and their margins are 70, 80%. There's never, I'll never be able to catch up. And so we ended up realizing we needed to pivot. And that's how we landed on our flaxseed gel, which is our hero product and the thing that we do differently than everybody else. Yeah, and you say we landed there, but Kim took yeah. There's a lot. It took there. us a while to get to that to it's, that flaxseed gel because we were we had tried making products our, on our own. We just couldn't get the flaxseed gel right, but it was the number one seller like by far. People loved it. Uh, we just couldn't figure it out because it's really volatile recipe. It goes bad within like three days. It starts growing mold. And so we couldn't make it shelf stable like a cosmetic product needs to be. So my wife, she's seven months pregnant with our first baby at this time. She spent a month in the kitchen on her feet, just grinding out recipes over and over again. It made day. like 50 batches mm -hmm. until we could got something that was stable, that we could scale mm -hmm. and do more than 60 in a pot. We could do 600, you know, with the machine. And we launched it to our audience and we had sold hundreds in a matter of hours. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we've never launched anything this successfully before. Mm -hmm. This has got to be it. Yeah, so we did a beta, it was 60 bottles. We was like, okay, 60 bottles, cool. Sold that in a couple of minutes. Let's do another 60. Sold that in about an hour, another 60. And then we're like, okay, crap, we actually have to make this now. Um, <laughs> so we ended up doing that beta launch of the flaxseed gel. And then we're like, you know what? This is actually what people want. This could be the next step in our business. So we decided at the top of 2018 to just quit the uh, subscription box business. We had like six boxes lined up. We had all this the inventory in our shot, house. Everything. And we were just like, let's throw it all away. And then we pivoted. And Is it still just you two at that time when you guys were doing this? We have some of our cousins and, and her that little brother for $10 help, an hour us out yeah, but like, now and again. No, no official anything, not yeah. even like, official contractors, right? Yeah, we're in our kitchen at our apartment. And then we, so in 2018, we pivoted to a traditional e-commerce store. We started selling our flaxseed gel and various fragrances and various oils, right? And then we also turned our best selling boxes, so four of them, into full-size products. So they're just hodgepodge products. They don't necessarily go together, just hodgepodge. And we ended up doing like a million in sales that year. So we wow. went from 140 to like a yeah, million. 10X. In yes. Yeah. And then the year after that, um, there are a few things that happened, I can go back, but the year after that, which is last year, we ended up doing 5.5 million. So it's like a 5X jump. So like we've been kind of like, there's there's a cost with growth, right? Cause so much you don't know. And then right. you have to find that out after the fact that well, if you had gone a little slower, you maybe have been able to implement some things. But now we have like over a, a staff of over 30 people and hopefully on our way to doing 10 million this year. So I'm excited. So in terms of, I mean, so many things there, but 
at some point, like one of the things that I learned moving from my first business to my next one was I was not thinking big enough. Did that resonate with you? And you're like, yes, when we do this, we're like, even on the pivot, was that something that you guys were like, we need to think bigger? For me, it was reading a, t a tremendous amount of books. And I was like, oh, if I had only known this when I was <laughs> that, you know. Yeah, I think yeah. the exact moment we, we realized, okay, this could be big, because we 140, we thought, like, oh yeah, we're doing it. Like that's almost as much as a salary, right? Like we're, we're yeah, really yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> uh, and then it was, she went to a comp, that same point where we pivoted, Kim went to a conference called Game Plan from the Traffic Sales and Profit Community, which is led by Lamar Tyler. And I remember I went there too with, with the baby. I was up in the hotel room, she was down at the conference. And she came up at the end of one of the days and she was like, there was this lady there and she did $300,000 last year. Oh, could you imagine doing $300,000? Uh, and I was like, That's, that would be nuts. If you could do that, <laughs> that would be, we would be on top of the world. Right? Cause all day, it's a thousand dollars a day, right? And now we make like 20,000 or more a day. But you know, like, it was just funny cause back then I was like, if we could just make a thousand dollars a day, that would be phenomenal, you know? Right. Right. So do you think that you would have had any kind of the success that you're experiencing now with Curlmix if you hadn't had failed with your social media startup? No, um, we probably would have we probably would have spun our wheels a lot longer. And then on with and wasted money on clarity. things, yeah, wasted money on things that we didn't know didn't make money, but we did that. It's like we call it like paying for our MBA, but it was a really cheap MBA. But you yeah. needed to, to, to learn yeah. those lessons and to be able to learn from them and take Curl Mix from, you know, 140 to a million in a year. I mean, you, you kind of needed that stepping stone first and foremost to be able to vault your next platform to new and uncharted heights. I mean, you said it yourself. Data is king. And so that's why we won't do retail. We're on, we're staying online because if I, if I don't have your phone Smart. number, your email, then this is not useful to me. You know, I don't necessarily, I don't want to just buy $10 from me in a, a Target. You know, that's not enough. I need to be able to continue to sell you over the lifetime of you as my customer. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.